I have in front of me uh, a letter that was drafted by 11 House Republicans. He found out live on The View yesterday that Republican congressmen want to investigate whether he broke the law. But could this be an act of revenge? Plus, Fox News host Dana Perino's fighting for her right in Hot Topics. Then, Juliana Rancic shares why she's happy she went public with her health battles. And Anna Navarro's back to guest co-host. Let's, Let's fire up Hot Topics with Whoopi, Sarah Haynes, Joy Behar, and Sonny Hostin. Now, let's get things started. She will be back on Monday joining us as guest co-host. Please welcome the fabulous Anna Navarro. Well, if we don't say so ourselves, we had a really great day yesterday because James mm -hmm. Comey was here. Yeah. But strange as this is going to sound, he found out on live television that 11 congressmen want to investigate whether he broke the law in handling the investigations of both Hillary Clinton and the new guy. <laughs> now, what do you make of the timing of all of this? They were totally watching the show. <laughs> <laughs> I find it interesting. It's the smoke and mirrors thing that we always talk about. We must be paying too close of attention to something else yes. because they always rule something out, a distraction out. Yeah. Well, and it's also right out of the what they call the Roy Cohn playbook. Mm -hmm. Roy Cohn was this, uh, I don't know if I could call him corrupt. Would you say he was corrupt? It's pretty uh, nasty. Nasty lawyer, yeah. one of Trump's role models. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, his whole philosophy was when they hit you, you hit back twice as hard, which is what Trump does. Mm -hmm. So I think that you, you think that we're, we're, we're going to just sit by while you investigate us? Well, we're going to investigate you. Meanwhile, is Hillary relevant anymore, really? Yeah. I, mean, I mean, they're suing Loretta. They're, they're asking for criminal, a lot of people. criminal violations and investigation into criminal violations against Loretta Lynch, uh, FBI counsel, FBI agent, uh, Comey, Hillary Clinton. Um, Roy Cohn was also seen as being very petty, and this seems very petty right. to me. It seems right. like very petty revenge, and, and the sad thing about it is we are all paying for that revenge, that pettiness, because these investigations come out of taxpayer dollars. Mm -hmm. And I think we saw this with the Benghazi investigation that went over two years, yeah cost over $7 million and nothing was Look, out. there's 515 members of Congress between the House and the Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, 11, and these 11 in particular are right-wing Republicans. They are strong supporters of President Trump, sure. people like Ron DeSantis in Florida, Ted Yoho, Matt Gates, very strong supporters of the president. Mm -hmm. You can find 11 people in Congress at any given time to call for an investigation on Mother Teresa. That's true. And she's been dead for 15 <laughs> That's years. True. <laughs> so, That's true. You know, that's true, right? It makes no damn difference. It, it doesn't, doesn't look seeing, good. It doesn't, doesn't look, look good. good. It's no. a distraction. We're talking about it. If you start seeing a letter that's getting signed by 100, yeah. then start right. paying attention. But 11 Congress yeah. people who are, you know, on yeah. the r very right wing of the Republican Party, Seems my, very well, my favorite real. thing about all this is they call attention to the dissimilar degrees of zealousness in the investigations <laughs> between <laughs> Hillary Clinton and the current guy. And I just wanted to point out that, you know, <laughs> Hillary Clinton was extensively investigated by multiple committees in yeah. Congress and the FBI. Now, the House Republicans say that she violated federal campaign finance law. Y'all oh. don't want to start that wow. conversation. <laughs> you don't want to start talking about violations of no. campaign finance because you're just going to open up a can of worms for yourself. Yeah. So y'all might just want to sit back and perhaps, and I know this is going to really shock a lot of people, <laughs> But maybe y'all want to read the book. Maybe you want to actually know what he says mm -hmm. and why he says it. You don't have to agree with it, but at least do your homework. Wait, yeah. can we, can we? Can... <laughs> I witnessed something at this table the other day with Comey, though, that made me laugh, Joy. Will you tell them what you gave him? 
Well, I gave him, I have a book called The Great Gas Bag, but, <laughs> and so there's a, a C, it go A to Z for, on, on Trump. C is for Comey, was one of the chapters. Mm -hmm. And I wanted him to have the book. But then I looked at it and it was like really nasty against him. <laughs> so what'd you do? So I tore the page out. <laughs> Probably but means well, that led me to the next thing, which is I said to him, oh, I'm giving you this book, but I tore the C's for Comey out. And he yeah. said, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, he was, I think it brings up the point that Comey is getting very strong reactions from the left sense. and the right. Yes, I know. I, mean, I have heard people he from the that Clinton campaign yeah. The, yeah. saying, He's an idiot. I still think he's an idiot. John Podesta said it on the right. Mm -hmm. He is really getting under That's Donald right. Trump's skin. Yeah. But what I loved about his reaction uh, when, I, when I read to him the fact that 11 Republicans had signed this letter, he was uh, thoroughly unbothered by it. Yeah, yeah. he did. Which is what Anna well, said. Well, that's what she Give said. me 100 and we'll talk. But, yeah. but listen, right. you know, let, so stuff you might not know about him. He launched two investigations into Hillary Clinton's emails. He investigated uh, investigated Bill and Hillary as part of the Senate Whitewater Committee in the 90s. He investigated Bill Clinton's pardon of financier Mark Rich. He, when he served as Deputy Attorney General under G.W. Bush, uh, he threatened to resign over the warrantless wiretappings of Americans. He prosecuted Martha Stewart and Scooter Libby. He gets... His thing is about the law. Is he perfect? As He says, no, I've made mistakes. But my thing is, if this is not right, this is where I'm going. And I yes. don't care what your beliefs are. I don't care if you're left or right. right. And that, that's what it should be. And yes. that's what it should be. And actually, we, I discussed uh, off camera with Director Comey the fact that when you're at the U.S. Attorney's Office, as he was, you don't know the political affiliations of anyone. It's nothing that ever comes up. He said he hired, you know, <laughs> dozens of people, and he never knew the political affiliation you know, but, but, of anyone, because but, you know, justice has a blindfold. Yeah. But it's Sonny, blind. he made such a terrible mistake when he started to go after Hillary's email with, without knowing what was in them. You mean opening up the, the whole thing about it. Reopening it, reopening it up, and then the, closing reopening it, then opening it. and yeah. closing, yeah. etc. It was such a big mistake, and that's what brought us to this mess that we're in. So well, I'm still mad at him. Well, well you know, it's is about I'm timing and the that. fact that you know that that happened two weeks, ten days before the election. Sure. Look, I think, I think it had an effect. A Some lot, people will tell effect. you it had no influence. I think it did influence a lot of people who already thought that she didn't have credibility, that she wasn't didn't trustworthy. But he explained and that, his reasoning in polls, the book, and I think people should read that book. He but didn't her poll numbers his take, a, take a, a dive after that? Right after they did. So, mm -hmm. they well, but in part, you know, listen, mm -hmm. she was never. If we are to believe what we're hearing. Mm -hmm. This was always a tainted race. Mm -hmm. yeah. If we're, ta if, if we're talking about Russian interference, yes. this has always been a tainted race. So we'll never know what really would have happened. Yeah. But the fact that he said, listen, yes, maybe I could have said it a different way because it's a question I asked him. Right. Yeah. He said, maybe I could have done it a different way, but this is how I did it. And I take responsibility for sure. it. And I got to, you know, I have to say, I will go with people who believe the law. I believe the law. Yeah. And it's like Gorsuch. Yeah. You know, yeah. Gorsuch, wow. everybody said, well, Neil Gorsuch, is, he's just going to vote mm -hmm. this. Well, you know, he's actually voting the law. Yeah. And I have to believe yeah. that that's going to be our saving grace. That, you know, maybe Stormy's the saving grace, maybe the women are the saving grace, maybe Russia, but I believe the law is going to get us where we need to be. Absolutely. And I, I'm going Each to, and every I keep day. My, it's not perfect. It is flawed. But what else do we have, That's all really? We got, That's yeah. all we got. We'll yeah, be right back. What makes us great today. Still ahead, burning for Cardi B. Why Bernie Sanders is really feeling Cardi's rap right now. An all-new Grey's Anatomy, tonight on CTV. I... Welcome back. So earlier this week... Earlier this week, U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley announced new Russian sanctions were being implemented. But our National Economic uh -huh. Council Director Larry Kudlow's mind, he's like, mm-mm. He, he said she must be confused because they're only considering sanctions. Now, Nikki was, like, not having it. She was like, uh, I don't get confused. <laughs> so you know who's confused now? 
<laughs> me. Why? <laughs> because I remember him saying there were going to be tough sanctions on Russia. I remember he yeah. said it. Now, none of us believed it, but I recall that he said it. Yeah. Right. So what is happening? And isn't he the one who thinks that Frederick Douglass is alive? Say, uh, yeah, like but, he's the one who's but, but, uh -huh. but look, we have yeah. seen this from Trump time and time again. Yeah. I mean, he he holds a position for less time than what you hold a yoga position for. <laughs> yeah. Right. We saw it on immigration. Right. We saw it on guns. Right. And now we saw it on sanctions. I right. think they cl clearly reversed themselves. The, you know, Nikki Haley is a careful woman. She's a deliberate woman. Mm -hmm. She's not out sure. there just shooting from the hip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but she, you know, she, I think she knew it's what true. she was doing. Yeah. Anna, does she not realize he works for Putin? Does she not realize? <laughs> Joy, you know, well, you've always me... said, though, you've called out from Senator Flake to uh, Gowdy, all the people that are not fighting and staying. Yeah. This is someone who's saying, you're calling me out on something. This wasn't my mistake. And she's yeah. standing up. I love and that saying, about And that's yeah. different from I everyone that. else we've ever yeah. seen. That's right. I mean, and I appreciate that because when she, listen, I, I am not a huge Nikki Haley fan. I don't like her politics. I remember in 2012, she said that minority groups were just special interest groups. In 2010, she said a marriage is just between a man and a woman. She's anti-choice, so anti-gay. Anti right, but marriage. on, this, but but on here. this issue, I think that that is significant, that she was, she's the only one, I think, in his cabinet yeah. that now looks better going, you know, in this administration than she looked to me going in. But look, what will he do about it? Look, on the gay her? marriage stuff, let's be fair. In 2010, there were mm -hmm. a lot of people, including folks, uh, you know, in the, the Obama the administration right, right. and the Clinton, on the left and the right, who had not evolved yet. I don't know what the hell there is to has evolve she, on. She, has she we don't know, for me, she equality, hasn't made any other statements, so, so she, she hasn't yeah, evolved. But right now, she's UN ambassador, and she speaks passionately about the, you know, the abuses that are going on in Syria, about what's going on in Venezuela. She was hasn't going done on it for in Chechnya Cuba. And, and the homosexuals that are that are that are getting killed there. I don't know if she's done it on every subject. I can yeah. tell you that on the things that are in the headlines, I think she's been a, a passionate voice. I think she is one of the few people, frankly, the only one I can readily think of, whose standing and stock has gone up instead of down I being part that. of this misadministration. <laughs> uh, you know, I think she has <laughs> shown yeah, a yeah, great yeah. growth <laughs> and breadth. So this was a woman bar. who was a governor of a southern state. Nobody really thought she had that much international yeah. gravitas. She mm -hmm. has risen to the occasion, and she ain't going to take any mansplaining and I, from Larry Kudlow, who's been there all of five minutes. And I, and I appreciate that. Her that. She's I appreciate that about, about so, her. You know, I think and she's showing, look, she's no cream puff, and don't, don't yeah. mess with Nick. And what's why he did, doing why there? Did what he think, yeah. Why did he think he was going to get away with calling her confused? Yeah. That's like calling a woman hysterical. I thought that yeah. I think what, the word what, what, was you know, thing. It shows you how so deaf the guy, these people are. Yeah. Because what he probably thought was, I'll just say she's confused, let her off the yeah. hook a little bit. But yeah. what it did was unleash all now the, the hook is in your butt. stuff. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there you and go. Now Kutlow? you're on the hook. Yeah, well, good. He had to this call, guy, Larry he called Kutlow. and he apologized to her. So As well, that. he should. Ever. This guy, Larry Kudlow, yeah. from what I understand, he's, an, he's a money guy. What's yeah. he doing he's about a money what guy? Is, what does international sanctions have to do with him? Well, it's part of economic policy, but everybody's a TV guy. I mean, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm surprised the there's anybody left TV guy. on Fox News, given that half of them are working in the administration. That's true. Including Sean Hannity. <laughs> <laughs> did you say Sean Hannity? <laughs> I believe she did. <laughs> but hell. <laughs> All are punished. We'll be right back. <laughs> you are... Fox News host and President Bush's former press secretary, Dana Perino, handled the scandalous week our current president's having? She's hitting hot topics next. For President George W. Bush before joining Fox as a host of The Five, and she's joining the five of us right now. <laughs> Thanks for the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome Dana Perino. Hey, how you doing? Director called me here yesterday, yeah. and we've had um, a big week. We had a big week. Big week. We yeah. had a big week. But uh, for the first time, he talked a little bit about um, the paragraph in his book about him commenting on Trump's appearance. Mm -hmm. uh, did that part make you question his motives at all? Not make me question his motives, no. I think that he wrote the book for the reasons that he says. He wanted to get his story out. I do think it's interesting, though, having written a couple of books, but also done PR for a couple of big books, like Decision Points that President Bush wrote. Mm -hmm. And when you're going through those books, you read every line, and you anticipate, as the PR person, 
what's going to get attention? And you know that that line is going to get attention. So I find it a little unbelievable that now he regrets putting it in there because they knew it was going to get attention. But I don't think it's a terrible detail. No. And also, if you were President Trump, you might have been like, okay, yeah, right. Somebody finally said I had decent size hands. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, it's not a bad thing. It's sort of like complimentary. By the way, coming from a six foot eight guy. Yeah. 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 Well, I was actually, when, it, something that's interesting, I don't think James Comey would remember me, but when I first came back to work uh, in Washington for the Bush administration, I was at the Justice Department. Mm -hmm. Junior Birdman, I was a spokesperson, and he was the Deputy Attorney General, and mm -hmm. a couple of times I had to accompany him to interviews, uh -huh. and so I'm five feet tall, and yeah. he's six eight, and it was, wow. you know. It was interesting. A little intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> he's a nice guy. Um, well, you were live on, on the air and the first to report Nikki Haley's response to the White House, which was, I don't get confused. What was going on? So um, I think it's important that people remember that uh, she had gone out on the Sunday shows um, and she had said very clearly that she was talking about the strikes in Syria yes. and that there was more pain to come, that Russia was going to face additional sanctions the next day. So later that night and into the morning, anonymous sources were saying that the White House was not going to do that policy. And by Tuesday morning, there was on the record, Larry Kudlow, the new economic advisor, was saying, you know, she maybe got a little ahead of herself. She got perhaps confused. was confused. Yeah. And one of the things, if you're an ambassador, um, first of all, you don't freelance. Right. Okay, so she wasn't making up, you don't make up sanctions. No, it doesn't happen. Then, the other thing is, the most important thing you have is your word. That is your credibility. Mm -hmm, and yeah. if that's being questioned mm -hmm. by the White House, even if it was anonymously, and then, you know, Larry Kudlow saying, well, maybe she was confused. I know they were trying to protect the president. Yes. But mm -hmm. at that time, they were hurting her yeah. mm -hmm. and her credibility. I was on air. I checked mm -hmm. my email in the commercial break asking me to get in touch with her. Mm -hmm. um, and it was said time sensitive. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, are we, what's going on? Are we going to war? <laughs> but so I, in the next commercial break, I contacted her, got in touch, and she said, this is what I want you to say on my behalf that um, with all due respect, I do not get confused. Right. Now, wow. you, you know anytime a southerner wow. begins a sentence exactly. with all due respect, <laughs> it means you fool. Yeah, exactly. You know what? <laughs> why, Dana, why, why do you think it does? <laughs> no question. Why do you think that Trump is so reluctant to impose sanctions on Russia? I don't know why the policy were to change. And I actually think that there are a lot of things that they have done on Russia mm -hmm. that they don't talk about as much. So I think they're tougher than they say on some things, especially on sanctions. And Russia is squeezed. Absolutely. But I also Trump think that scared. For He's her, almost like scared to do anything against Putin. I think Putin. he's trying to be, well, I, look, I don't speak for him. I don't right. know him. Um, okay. Perhaps they're trying to be respectful. But I do think on the point about Nikki Haley, as soon as that, I announced that during mm -hmm. my one more thing on the five, immediately Larry Kudlow called her, they patched it up, and he went on the record saying, my fault. Okay. And I actually think that par maybe what happened here is you have a new team. Yes. Larry Kudlow's been there five days. Josh, John Bolton has been there five days. Nikki Haley is up here in New York. Yeah. And you just have to coordinate really well if you're going to be talking about or these pay things. attention. Pay attention to what she's doing. And not let doing. somebody hang. Yeah, not leave well, her hanging out. Well, like you know, and today you see there's an article with anonymous sources close to the White House, I don't know how close that is, saying that she's being disloyal. And my point wow. is, well, what about loyalty to her? Yes. yes. Loyalty goes both ways. You think so, well, it's it's international you. faith. Yeah, I was just saying, I, I want to ask you. You know, the last couple of days since Mrs. Barbara Bush died have been, for me, a stark reminder of when there was civility and congeniality and when yeah. different sides could get along. You and I share friends in common. Some of them are Democrat friends. Mm -hmm. You are very good friends with Donna Brazil, as am I. She was very critical of your then boss president, mm -hmm. George W. Bush, yet there could be friendship. What, what it wasn't happened? just friendship, though, Anna. Um, but what after Hurricane that Katrina, not, not Donna Brazile was actually the one who came to I the Bush White House and said, I'm going to work with you. And she got pilloried by the Democrats yes, for that outreach. But she was stalwart, and she actually did the right thing because that's how New Orleans got rebuilt. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think of something that Barbara Bush uh, embodied, and it's that for those of us interested or that work in politics and media, it's important to remember that politics is what we do. Mm -hmm. It is not who we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so good. And I don't even understand that. I don't know what you mean. I don't know what you mean. To me, politics is personal. Well, and it's values driven, isn't it? Yeah.
But I think you know. I think you can. The, the, I think the the issue is you can differ politically, but that doesn't mean you have to question each other's motives and patriotism yeah, and humanity. character. Except now you can you can question somebody's character, but not necessarily judgment. because of their politics. Well, I want to make sure we. No. Oh, sorry. No, no. Go ahead, baby. I want to make sure we get to the book. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, let me tell you about Jasper. Was just released in paperback. How did Jasper, your dog, become America's dog? <laughs> so years ago. Excuse me. <laughs> this is a great segue. Well, his nickname that uh, Bernie Behar exactly. is. So Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Everyone loves it for politically. Everyone loves our dogs. And when I wrote, let me tell you about Jasper, and I had a chance to come here actually right before the election <laughs> last year or in 2016, yeah. it's that it, it is the one thing that is not political. Like, yeah. It is a bipartisan, nonpartisan right. thing. Everybody <laughs> loves their dogs. Yes. And so if you can't think of anything to think about with your fellow <laughs> human, talk about your dog That's and right. everything will be okay. <laughs> yes. um, Jasper actually, it, it, uh, he only got nicknamed that because somebody was suing a, a, a tabloid for taking too many pictures of their dog. And Greg Gutfeld on the show said, would you be upset, Dana, if, if a paparazzi was taking pictures of your dog? And I said, of course not. I will share Jasper with everyone. He can be America's dog. So oh. that's how Oh, wow. <laughs> well, my dog Bernie is also becoming, as uh, you know, we pointed yeah. out here, America's dog also. Yes. <laughs> he wears um, a bow tie. I think yeah. you need to introduce Bernie to Jasper and see how that goes. Oh. They'd probably get along great. Okay. <laughs> how, many, how, many, how many followers does uh, Jasper have on Instagram? <laughs> To admit, I have I have 173,000 followers on Instagram. Ooh, you do. I do. Does yeah. Jasper? Well, the Jasper thing is, the, the key is, I think only people only follow me because he's on my page. I didn't give him his own page. Oh. So he's not old enough. Yeah, you know, you have to have parental control on these things. How many does Bernie <laughs> Behar have? Bernie at, at Bernie Behar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 16,000 at the moment. Uh, it'll soon to be 160,000. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. <laughs> uh, thanks to Dana Perino, members of our audience, you are all getting a copy of her book. Let me tell you about Jasper. <laughs> This is the Pepsi that your father drank, and his father drank before he met your grandmother. This you have a story yes. to share with us. It, uh, yes. Uh, about a week ago, a dear friend of mine lost her 19-month-old um, baby to leukemia. And within 10 hours, this is, this is the family, welcomed a new little girl. So that's Edith Aww. Jean Newman, the little baby there. And that's Matt and Amanda, the mom and dad, who went through a seven-month journey fighting the big fight. Right. And then they welcomed little Eleanor Jean Newman. So it's a story of... That's that's little Ellie. Mm -hmm. It's a, a story of the cycles of life. It happened on Easter yeah. weekend, which is about the passing and resurrection. Yeah. It's a beautiful family. I've never witnessed such human strength. Yeah. Um, I just I wanted to shout this out because Ellie will have this forever to see her little sister and the mark she left. So I ask you to do a kind act for someone today and do it for Edie. We yeah. call ourselves Team Edie. Hashtag smiles for miles <laughs> because she smiled from her toes. She was yeah. a beautiful little soul that, like a star, her physical being burned out, but her light will shine forever. So yeah. I just wanted that moment for Can her. we t discuss the puppy for a second? Uh, that's Napoleon the Chihuahua. Okay. <laughs> I love that Napoleon's like, here's my tail. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Napoleon is a special little dog. I once outsourced my own Chihuahuas because they didn't like always other dogs right. to babysit Napoleon when Napoleon was a baby. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're, we're connected on all levels. I but, know, uh, that, that, that reminds me of, um, the, you know, it, it, that's come out in this last few days. Barbara and George Bush lost mm -hmm. a baby, a three-year-old Robin, Robin, to leukemia. Yes, to leukemia. Yeah. And she said, there's a quote of hers where she said that losing Robin made her and George Herbert Walker Bush love every human being more. Mm -hmm. So I think they, she, she also, she, the other story about that, maybe they're interested, is that her, it was so devastating yeah. to her that her hair turned white and yes. she never dyed it again. Sort of like to freeze the moment and uh, as a testament to the child. And I think, but also, yeah. I think it, it's also what made her able to approach other ill children yes. yes and have 
empathy for what these parents of children born with AIDS yeah. were going yes, through. Because right. remember, yes. she was one of the first women yes. who was not afraid to embrace. So yes. empathy is very important in our lives. Uh -huh. yeah. So we have to pay attention. And they found comfort in the bushes because when I came to visit and hold the baby, they said knowing other people have survived this That's and right. thrived in their lives yeah. Yeah. and turned it into something good gives us hope. Yeah. Mm. So. Wow. And on that note, we will be right back. All these people here are from the future. Monday. Scoville take on the backlash over their new comedy, I Feel Pretty. Diane Sawyer is exposing whether the Me Too movement is helping regular women in the workforce. And it's Feel Good Friday on View Your Deal. This spring, millions of Peanuts fans in Manhattan and all over the world would be greeted by eye-popping, larger-than-life murals created by seven acclaimed artists as they honor the iconic work of my friend Charles Schultz Aww. for the Peanuts Global Artist Collective. And when I say all over the world, I really mean all over the world. They'll be in New York, Paris, San Francisco, Tokyo, Mexico City, Seoul, Korea. And the hope is that it starts a worldwide conversation about some of the universal themes highlighted by, by peanuts. peanuts. Uh -huh. yeah. So okay. keep an eye out for them. They're yeah. everywhere. So also, another fabulous highlight, <laughs> Cardi B <laughs> just found out she has a big fan in Bernie Sanders because he retweeted her quote that FDR is the real Make America Great Again president because if it weren't for him, older Americans wouldn't get Social Security. <laughs> Bernie tweeted, Cardi B is right, and added, <laughs> we need to strengthen Social Security so seniors retire with the dignity they deserve. Yeah. And people... <laughs> Is it really that shocking that someone would actually <laughs> know their history mm -hmm. in this environment? You know, Good for her. it's you know, it doesn't regardless of what you've done for a living, it doesn't make you dumb or whatever. Mm -hmm. You can't assume that because someone maybe worked the poll or is over here mm -hmm. it isn't smart enough to know how her American history works and how it in, impacts on her. Yeah. That's what we expect. Oh, listen, she's that. got, I know. She, that, Cardi B has got her pulse, you know, her finger on the pulse of America. She mm -hmm. did, I, I retweeted a video that she did on mm -hmm. Instagram where she was talking about how mad she was about yes. paying all these oh, taxes and yes. where it was going. It got retweeted by Grover Norquist, who's yes. one yes. of the most conservative of yes. you know, fiscal reform. Yeah. To me, what was shocking was not that Cardi B knew her history, that but that Bernie, Bernie Sanders knew Cardi B. Yeah. That's right. That was great. Oh, no. Why would that? No, he's the, so good with this table. Really, right. pretty hip. Sort of said. So, what do you know? And he he knew his stuff. But hey, yeah. you know, it's what we expect of our young people. This yeah. is what we yes. should expect for our young people. Yes. We should expect them to know the history of the country they live in. They really we'll be right back. Yeah. 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 Juliana Rancic is a one-woman empire. She's an entertainment reporter, a staple on award show red carpets, a fashion designer, winemaker, best-selling author, whew, and owns two of the hottest restaurants in Chicago and D.C. with her husband, Bill Rancic, all while raising her beautiful five-year-old boy, Duke. Please welcome Juliana Rancic. <laughs> reading the things that you do. But that intro is humbling. Oh my gosh, thank you for that. Well, you and your husband, Bill, yeah. uh, you have a five-year-old son we named Duke. Duke, yeah. And you recently pulled back from work so you could be home with your, with your uh, family in Chicago. Yeah, you know, uh, never an easy decision, right? Especially when you love your career. Yeah. Uh, but I had to do it, you know? I, my priorities were a little out of whack for a while there. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just working so much. 
And if anyone knows my story, you know, we struggled to have a child. Yes. We went through infertility and it was a long process. Mm -hmm. And I always, you know, I made a deal with God that when, when you, you know, if you bless us one day with a child, I got emotional thinking about it. Oh. Uh, if you bless us one day with a child, I'm going to be there for him. And uh, so I pulled back from the mm -hmm. career I love. And it was the best decision I ever made to just be home and be a mom and, and not completely give up my career, but just switch things around a little bit, right? Yeah. You know, just put the focus on family, have the career still going, uh, handle as much as I can, you know, just shift it a little bit. Good for uh, you. But make good family the priority. Yeah, and that's good the for most you. important it's thing. Amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, now, you have this huge career. Does your son understand that at all? Does he know what you do for a living? What I do? Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny. So during the big award shows, my husband, you know, is like, let's watch mom, right? So he watches the red carpet shows. It's cute. My husband actually will post little Instagrams of, of, my, hus of my son watching, and it's really cute. But... Uh, so it's funny, recently at school, they went around and they were asking the kids about mommy and daddy's jobs and trying to kind of gauge if the kids know what their parents do. <laughs> and they got to my son and he goes, my mommy is a singer. <laughs> and I was like, Wait, what? And I was so excited. The teacher called me to tell me, he goes, why does he think you're a singer? And I go, well, you know, I haven't been working that much. So when we're at home, we're always singing. And I Aww. love singing and playing music. and. I think I'm a really good singer. I'm not. <laughs> um, and But my son thinks he I'm a thinks great singer. That's all that matters. So it was awesome. I'm like, if he thinks I'm a singer, maybe I am one. You, you know? are. So it was cute, though, that, that he thought I was, he thinks I'm a professional singer. Aww. So let's let him believe that. that. Wow. He can add it to the yes. intro. Let's own it. Let's own it. <laughs> exactly. You know, Juliana, I, as everyone knows, you were diagnosed with breast cancer in 2011. Yeah. You celebrated five years cancer-free in 2016. Mm -hmm. I Incredible. did. Incredible. What did you. that feel like? Uh, you know, it was, obviously, it's all I ever wanted, right, yeah. since the day I was diagnosed. Um, and then I remember when I woke up that morning, to be honest, you know, of course, there was this incredible sense of joy and, and relief, uh, but I also felt sadness because I was very public with my breast cancer. And when you go public with breast cancer, you have the privilege of meeting a lot of women and hearing their stories. And for me, it was actually, um, I remember crying quite a bit that day because I just couldn't help but think about other women who didn't have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was just heartbreaking. And I remember, you know, I wanted to put something out there. I wanted to post something about being five years cancer free and, and giving other women hope and inspiration. But at the same time, it actually took me several days to craft that message because I wanted to um, really respect other women as well and, and yeah. be very sensitive to people. You know, um, it's, it's obviously, you know, it's the hardest thing I ever went through. Mm -hmm. Being diagnosed with breast cancer, 36 years old, no family history, just the most shocking moment of my life. Um, but, you know, at the same time, I've met so many incredible women and, you know, all I wanna do is use the platform I have to help other women and, and encourage women to, to be proactive about their health and, yes. mm -hmm. and really put themselves on that to-do list. You know, so many of us put everyone else on the to-do list, we sure but do. we gotta put ourselves on that to-do list. <laughs> well, that's too. a good segue to my question. You're working with our sponsor, Genentech, yeah. on their Not One Type campaign. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's very important. You know, I didn't realize before I was diagnosed that there isn't just one type of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of types of breast cancer and you really need to know what you have. And I think so many women hear breast cancer and they don't really know the questions to ask. And so I, I love this campaign. It's all about, you know, educating women that there's not just one type. And so there's a great website called notonetype.org. And so you can go to the website and what I love about it, one of my favorite things on this website, they actually give you a list of questions to ask your doctor. Because when you're diagnosed mm -hmm. with breast cancer, you don't know what to ask. Right, in the face. right. right? Yeah. yeah, or you think like, oh, well, you know, my mom had it or a friend of mine had it. I, you know, we, we must, we're probably going to go through the same thing. Not necessarily. You know, it's not a, a one-size-fits-all disease. I no idea. Yeah, I no, there are many types. And 
you really need to ask the questions because you want the treatment that's right for your type. Right, right. You know, and you're not one size fits all. So it's really about, you know, I, I love these questions because you can take a screenshot on your phone or print them out, mm -hmm. bring them to the doctor, ask those questions, write them down. Because I got to be honest with you, I used to go into the doctor's office and I'd ask all these questions. And then 10 minutes later, I'm like, what, what just happened? What did I ask? I forgot. Like, yeah. I got home and people would ask me, so what did the doctor say? You know, what's the stage? What's the this? And I'm like, let me try to get everything together. Mm -hmm. So when you're just prepared, when you're organized, when you have those questions in front of you, I think that's really, really, um, it's empowering and it'll help you get the treatment you need and make the best decisions for you. And not just you, if a loved one is watching mm -hmm. right now, print that out mm -hmm. for a friend of yours, for your sister, your wife, whoever it is. So, you know, it can help her when she goes to the doctor. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, yeah. thank you. My thank you for thanks, the work. Thank, thank you for the work. For watching, we want everybody to have a great day. Take a little time to enjoy the view. You know what this.